I have heard many globalists claim that there is no evidence for a flat earth. So let's take a look at the dictionary definition of the word evidence. Evidence. Ground for belief. A sign or indication of something. Malcolm, do you agree with these definitions? Yes, I agree. The example I like to use is, the girl's head felt warm, which was evidence that she might have a fever. Niles, are you cool with evidence being defined that way? Yes. Yes, evidence is any observation or test result it supports or it doesn't support a hypothesis. E evidence for or against, in this case your hypothesis would have to be if the girl's head felt warm then the girl might have a fever. Thank you Theodore. How about you Charles? I, I don't really have a big qualm with, with, with that definition of evidence. MC Toon, do you agree with evidence being defined this way? That was evidence that she might have a fever. Yes, that, that okay. works. Might is not good enough to give her narcotics. More evidence would be required. I completely agree. The girl's head felt warm. Is it just me? Is my hand cold? Exactly how warm is her head? Where's the thermometer? Nonetheless, it is the very first piece of evidence. You cool with that? Yes. When we look at ancient views of the world, we can see that quite a few cultures believed that the world was flat. And I'm sure they had reasons for believing so. It doesn't take much to look out at the horizon and say, that looks pretty flat to me. And looking at the way the sun shines across the water, it makes sense. I don't see this effect happening on a ball. That should qualify as evidence. Now this is said to be the first photo of the Earth from space, taken in 1946 from an altitude of about 65 miles up, or 105 kilometers. And that looks pretty flat. And when we see crap like this, it raises some serious suspicions. I'm sure you've seen the basketball player who graduated from Duke. From Duke. That was hitting the news the last couple of days. And I saw he that. believes that dinosaurs are fake mm -hmm. and that the world is flat. Even educated people of our day are finding enough evidence to believe that the earth is flat and publicly say so. Okay, so here's the thing, Joe. Okay? Here, here, I've thought about this. People should be able to think whatever they want, whenever they want, provided it doesn't subtracts away from someone else's rights. Okay. Do you agree that there's evidence for a flat earth? Um, to be very pedantic, I would say there is some. Okay. Not there much. Yeah, I think some is quite the understatement. And that dude who jumped out of a perfectly good balloon, um, <laughs> what's his name? Felix! Felix Bumgardner. He is talking about the Red Bull jump here. I'm the guy who jumped from space. That is about 24 miles high, or 39 kilometers. And for further reference, a plane's normal cruising altitude is said to be between 30 and 40,000 feet, which is about six or seven miles up, compared to this 24 miles up. Okay, here we go, Felix. The images when they showed uh, Felix Bumgardner, where he's prepared to jump, you see this curved earth. That's a fisheye lens, dude. Okay? Fisheye lenses take horizontal lines and bend them convex when you're above the midplane of the, of the photo. In order to gather in okay. more of the image. Correct. That's the only way you can distort it to fit it onto a flat plane. Because right. it's just looking at a full sort of 360, well, 180, all right, and it's trying to get it in. But what happens if you take that horizontal line, the horizon, and put it below the midplane of the camera? It then bends the other way. Mm. 
you can see that happening right here. Uh, he would have been about two millimeters above the surface of this globe. That's his edge of space jump. <laughs> now, so, you know, I, I don't, it's fine. He wants to, I don't have a problem if he does it, but the, the honesty of it would greatly diminish what I think people thought he was actually doing. Okay. So in the photo, you see this curvature of Earth's surface, and he said, wow, he's in space, look at that. No, he's not. At that height, you don't see, you don't see the curvature of the Earth if you are two millimeters above this beach ball. <laughs> it is, you just don't. <laughs> that stuff is flat. Malcolm, do you agree with Neil Tyson when he says you can't see the curvature of the Earth from two millimeters above this beach ball? Yes, I agree with Neil Tyson when he said you can't see the curvature of the Earth when you are two millimeters above this beach ball. Are you going to do any of those? Like, would you, if they let you up on the Jeff Bezos spaceship, they send people up there all the time yeah, now, yeah. right? So it's fairly regular. I'm an astrophysicist. You're not interested? No, let me, let me, let me okay. hear me out, hear me out. So take Earth and shrink it down to like a schoolroom globe. So now we can think of distances relative to that and ask how high up did Bezos and Branson go? If you think that looks real enough to believe. The claim is that they went up about 66 miles which is about the same altitude that we are told that this image was taken from. And ask how high up did Bezos and Branson go? Okay, so here's the school room, how far away would you say? Quarter inch. You say quarter inch? Okay, they went the thickness of two dimes. Oh. And a boy who jumped out of a balloon some years ago? Yeah. Um, what's his name? Uh, Felix Baumgartner? Mm -hmm. Thickness of one dime. So this idea that they're going, oh, I see the curvature of the Earth. And no, you don't. You don't. The world-renowned astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson was saying that you don't see any curvature 24 miles up, and you still don't see any curvature 66 miles up. I'm sorry. Did Jeff Bezos doesn't see the curvature of the Earth? You will, you will see the edge of the Earth. The apparent horizon, which you can see from the ground. But... Ask how far away is your horizon when you're only that high up? You can just look at that, go to the schoolroom globe, go two dime thicknesses up, and then draw a line to, how, to ask how much of Earth do you see? You'll see a circle, but that's a circle cookie cut out of the larger sphere. If you can't see the curvature of the Earth from 24 miles up, and you can't see the curvature of the Earth from 66 miles up, don't bother telling me you can see the curvature of the Earth from a plane, like Mythbusters did in their episode, Flights of Fantasy. This is officially the highest up ground I have ever been. We are coming up on 60,000 feet, 12 miles above the surface of the Earth. Whoa, 12 miles above the surface of the Earth. The sky has gotten to be a very, very dark blue. What an unbelievably beautiful day. And from this height, 67,500 feet. The edge of our planet has a definitive curve to it. Really? That looks pretty flat to me. Please keep in mind, this is 12 miles up in comparison to Felix's 24 miles up and the Blue Origin's 66 miles up. According to Neil Tyson, this would be about half the thickness of a dime half above a standard classroom-sized globe. More three-dimensional than I have ever seen it. There we are, ladies and gentlemen, 70,000 feet. Flat earthers keep asking me for evidence of the curvature of the earth. I cannot open your eyes to the truth, but I can show you this. U2 spy plane captures stunning images 13 miles above earth.
Notice that the wing of the aircraft is nearly perfectly straight in the foreground of this photo. Proof there is no distortion caused by a curved cockpit window or the use of a fisheye lens on the camera. There we are. Ladies and gentlemen, 70,000 feet. Yeah, you could totally see that bend despite the straight airplane wing. Please be aware of how fisheye lenses don't distort diagonal lines very much. No, you did not prove anything. According to your drawing, the whole image from left to right and top to bottom should be distorted and curved. The objects in the foreground are very straight, proving your assumptions incorrect. Your lame attempt at rebuttal has utterly failed. It's just the same mindless pathetic copy-paste excuse repeatedly used by fluff tards to discredit any evidence presented. I've seen it a hundred times. Yawn. Ah, oh, there's no way he could be using a fisheye lens here. Look at all those straight diagonal lines. Plot for fairy tales, sire, but in real life, oh no, no, it was foredoomed to failure. Failure, eh? <laughs> Take a look at that, you pompous windbag! <laughs> and now we understand a fisheye lens. So, no, he didn't see the curvature of the Earth, but you think he did, and he's high up, and what do we need NASA for? That's a good question, Neil. What do we need NASA for? What is it good for? Absolutely nothing! Just remember, if it was real, there would be no need to fake it. Ever. Now, going back to the Red Bull jump. Remember, this horizon is flat. How many miles across do you think that horizon is? Over a hundred, perhaps? If there is no curvature across over a hundred miles across the x-axis, what in the world would make you think you could detect curvature over just a few miles across the z-axis. Geometrically speaking, to say you can see curvature across 20 miles, but can't see any curvature across 100 miles, makes just about as much sense as Felix jumping from his balloon, seeing no curvature, and then seeing more and more curvature as he falls and gets closer and closer to the ground. In other words, it makes no sense whatsoever. This message has been brought to you by the Flat Earth Institute of Science. Thank you all for watching. That stuff is flat! <laughs>